Good afternoon and welcome to today's session, AHA, that is Ask Him Anything with Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. It's a unique webinar concept, specially designed for enterprise owners and senior IT professionals. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He has over 18 years of experience and expertise of IT industry and is also known as seasoned technology stalwart and inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. In this AHA webinar, you will have insights on what are the tried and tested strategies to minimize social software licensing cost, what are the small enterprise but are subject to stringent compliances and NDA by our customers. How can we make such compliances more affordable? Off late, IT in a box is a buzzword. It is reliable as traditional multiple software, hardware, IT infrastructure. How do an IT manager contribute positively to the overall business? Uh, Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Thank you, Prasanna. Good afternoon, all. So we are back with uh, this AHA session. This is fourth AHA session. We call it AHA by Ask Him Anything. Anything pertaining to IT can be discussed in this particular forum. And I always try my best to answer uh, those questions, queries, or discussions by the best of my knowledge. So today uh, we have uh, selected this particular four questions and uh, this particular four questions are basically compilation of the questions you have submitted, all the audience uh, have submitted while registering. We have compiled them and we have uh, generalized them so that uh, it can cover larger scope of uh, IT topics. And today we are going to discuss these questions and I'm going to brief you about what we are going to discuss today. And before that, as always, uh, we always want to know the composition of the attendees uh, in terms of whether uh, they are IT professionals, they are enterprise owners, or they are uh, vendors or system integrators or consultants, uh, based on which uh, we drive our uh, next slides and next uh, discussions to make them more relevant. So, uh, Prasanna, can you just uh, uh, start this particular poll to find out the composition of the attendees? Uh, I request you to uh, go through this poll and give your valuable input so that uh, I can uh, come to know more about the composition of the attendees. So as we see the results on the screen, 18% uh, of the attendees are uh, either SME owners, partners, or directors. 73% of the attendees are IT professionals, and 9% of the attendees are IT vendors or system integrators. Since a majority of the attendees are IT professionals, uh, I will uh, try to discuss a lot of technicalities also. Of course, it will not bore others. Uh, I will also explain those technicalities in layman's uh, language. So let me uh, express what should we expect from this particular webinar. You know, we are going to spend around 50 minutes now on words. And what should we expect? So basically, uh, this webinar, because we have got so many questions pertaining to that, uh, uh, we have compiled it 
like effective adoption of IT in SMEs. Most of the questions were pertaining to effectiveness of IT adoption in SMEs. And uh, most of them were categorized in uh, three broad categories. One is the return on investment related. Another is uh, effectiveness related. And the third one was notional losses related. In return on investment, of course, the investment in hardware, investment in software and expenses on services. Uh, there were certain questions pertaining to that. So we are going to touch upon that. Uh, effectiveness in a way uh, we buy some IT product and it is full of a lot of features. Whether we use all those features or whether we need all those features and we pay for it. So this is a very, very uh, uh, prominent and common question uh, which we have seen in this registration uh, by, uh, uh, by, by the attendees. So it is about effectiveness is about future feature utilization complexities because of a lot of features. So do we really need a feature rich product which becomes complex because of a lot of features? We'll discuss that. An element of democracy. Um, many a times the effectiveness of an IT product is affected because of the element of democracy. Means uh, sometimes let's say for example, organization invests in CRM but people don't use CRM or people don't feed data to CRM, then because of people's uh, reluctance or maybe laid back attitude not to use CRM, which is very democratic, the investment in CRM has lower returns and effectiveness in marketing and sales processes of CRM is negligible if it is not participated. So we mean it by this. And notional losses, if something goes wrong in IT or a wrong decision is made, um, there could be notional losses. It could be business continuity related notional losses. It could be competitive exploitation related notional losses. It could be default on the compliance also. And that could be a notional loss. We might lose a customer if we do not comply with their uh, specifications in information security. And sometimes notional losses are due to productivity. If there is a lot of democracy, if there is lack of policy, uh, IT policy in the organization, sometimes users are distracted and they do a lot of unproductive things on IT in terms of entertainment, in terms of time pass, and that affects the productivity and that is again a notional loss. So today we are going to discuss about effective adoption of IT policy with the perspective of ROI, effectiveness and what notional losses we can avoid. So now we will start with our first question. So the first question is how to decide on cloud or on premise? So this is a very relevant question. Um, I would say that whatever content on the media is available, is dominated by what is cloud, how is cloud, what are the benefits of cloud. So everybody is looking at cloud as a futuristic technology even today. 10 years ago, cloud was considered as a futuristic technology. Right now also, we are uh, considering it as a futuristic technology. Of course, we are closer to uh, that and that span of futuristicness is narrowed, but yes, Cloud is still mystery for most of us. Most of us even uh, don't know how to logically approach making of the decision, whether we want to adopt cloud or we want to be on premise. So first of all, I would like to answer this question in three different parts. The first part is what, when we talk about cloud or cloud adoption, what do we mean? So in my opinion, there are five different levels of cloud adoption. Most of us use Gmail or Office 365 and it is on cloud. That does not mean that we have adopted cloud fully. It is one level of cloud adoption. So let me tell you what, which are the levels which we think that uh, they can be categorized for the adoption of the cloud. 
So level A is like email hosting. Most of us do it. You know, we have adopted cloud for our email hosting very well. Another level is for off-premise backup. You know, uh, earlier we used to take the tape backups, taking tape to the homes or maybe some other locations. Now we have cloud backup, which is not in our premise, which is somewhere outside. And that is another level of cloud backup. So adoption of cloud is very, very common in email hosting. Adoption of cloud for backup, off-premise backup, is very much rapidly taking place, spreading, and organizations are comfortable with that. Third level of cloud adoption is application hosting or SaaS. SaaS is software as a service. So when we talk about, let's say, Tally or some legacy application an organization is using, many organizations explore whether we can host Tally or any software as a service kind of application on cloud. There are many CRMs which are available as software as a service. There are many ERP services which are available as software as a service. So we just have to pay per user per year kind of or per month kind of charges and that application is up and running. We might have our legacy application which we might put on cloud infrastructure provided by Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud, and we can very well host our application and access it from anywhere. So this is the third level of um, adoption of cloud. Fourth level of adoption of the cloud is file data sharing and collaboration. Sometimes we want to share our files, you know, then we try to use cloud like Dropbox or Google Drive or such online drives available for sharing the data and collaborating on the same, even one drive. And the E-level of cloud adoption is full private cloud infrastructure, nothing on-premise. Everything is on cloud, whatever you name it. It could be your files, it could be your ERP data, it could be your emails, it could be your backup, it could be everything is on cloud. So there are five levels of cloud adoption. So when we want to decide whether cloud or on-premise, it will not be a black and white answer. You know, it would be uh, what level you want to adopt and gradually to what level you want to move. So this is one thing where we should be sensitive to levels of cloud adoption. And we have to find out which level is suitable for us and which level would contribute positively to our businesses. Now let us understand a logical approach. How you decide which level is good for you? So you need to answer uh, three questions for that. And then there are thumb rules, which I will define, which you can note down. And based on that, mostly you would be optimizing your cloud adoption. So here, number of locations, how many locations your business is operating from? This is very important. Another question is how many remote users apart from those locations? So we take an example of a manufacturing company which has three manufacturing plants and one office or they have one office and one manufacturing plant. So in that case, we are talking about four locations or two locations. Sometimes the companies have resident representatives. So they are the remote users who work from home or who work from co-working spaces. So the another question is how many remote users you have? And the third is percentage of users at single location means if you have three locations at one and total 200 users and out of which 125 users are at one location, then we need to find out how many percentage of num total number of users are there at each location. Once you answer these three questions, you can logically derive what would be your adoption level for the cloud. So now I am defining the thumb rule. So there are three types of three types of entities who want to adopt cloud, you know, consumers, you know, very small offices, very small offices, like a chartered accountant having a staff of four or five people, or a doctor having a staff of two, three people. 
very very small organization i would call it as micro organizations when it is a micro organization uh, when there are so small teams they are very well uh, needed teams you know which trust each other very much for them adoption of cloud in terms of level a for email hosting level b for off premise backup level c for application hosting or saas and level d for file sharing and collaboration it is absolutely fine if you are catering to any organization or if your organization is larger than that you know which is small medium enterprise which has more than 15 computers which has maybe less than 500 computers or 300 computers in that case such organizations can go for email hosting and off premise backup very easily and rest it is recommended that they should be having on premise why most of the, these organizations of this size they will have multiple locations or single location to operate from even if they have multiple locations they will have majority of their users at one location so when majority of the users are at one location it doesn't make sense to go on cloud because then let's say you have 50 users in one office and those 50 users connect to internet because they want to connect to your cloud infrastructure it doesn't make sense for two reasons one you are becoming internet dependent to you are uh, you are spending a lot of money on your internet connectivity and backup internet connectivity because you don't want your users to be unproductive in case internet is not available and when you are dependent on cloud so for such organizations i would always say that they can uh, adopt uh, a and b level because they need um, backup because they need access of emails from anywhere as well as uh, they need good anti spam and anti virus system on their email which is easily available and for rest it could be on premise and for very large enterprises you know who can afford security cyber security who can afford technology adoption they can go for level e i'll tell you why when a small organization uh, goes for level e and puts all its it infrastructure on cloud they do not have enough money or they cannot spend enough money to secure that cloud you know it has an economy of scale for a smaller deployment investment in cyber security sometimes does not justify so for small organizations going at level e where all, everything is on cloud would be disastrous because they will not be able to defend any cyber attacks very well because sometimes they don't have technical expertise also while the larger enterprises who want to access cloud they have large number of users so they can invest very well in cyber security so that per user cost is lower affordable justified and they can go for a complete adoption of cloud and while you are deciding about any cloud service provider you should have certain concerns always you know and those concerns should be very well dealt with the first concern while you are adopting cloud is exit barrier let's say tomorrow if you want to discontinue that crm service or that erp service how will you get all your data back and once you get that data back really can you uh, use the data same way you have been using you know sometimes people go on erp cloud cloud on uh, erp on cloud and let's say after one year they want to discontinue then they get all the data in excel file now how do they use their vouchers ledgers accounts everything in excel you know they don't have any structured form of data when they get back from the cloud so exit barrier is very important you must think about it another is recurring cost if you have a five year horizon you need to think about recurring cost and cost of ownership so when you are comparing a cloud always think about how much are you going to spend for next five years and compare to that if you go on premise for next five years what will be your expense 
so you need to understand uh, maybe saving uh, saving on the capex would be short term but if you have a five year horizon sometimes capex is more uh, uh, lucrative than opex which is recurring cost in which you continue to pay you keep paying and you don't own anything then when you are adopting cloud uh, at level b c or even d you need to understand data leakage possibility as soon as you are on cloud all your data is available from anywhere and there are again two levels of cloud services one which is on public cloud another which is on private cloud sometimes it is unaffordable for small organizations and if they, they go for public cloud their data is available accessible from anywhere and whoever knows the credentials theoretically can get access to that data so data leakage possibilities have to be considered when you are going on cloud fourth concern is price escalation and it is proven if you remember 3 years back uh, google uh, you know revised the price of its per user per year from 1500 to 2500 in last two years microsoft has revised the price for o365 subscriptions at least for two times so this is something like once you adopt cloud all your data is on cloud and you are facing a very high exit barrier at that time it should not be like that service provider exploits that state of the consumer and they continuously escalate the price so this is another concern when you are talking about cloud has to be considered data integrity off late you know there are so many startups there are so many small small companies who have started offering saas you know in terms of hrms in um, the field of erp now off late it is observed that these companies do not have information security standard so that they can protect the data of their customers or they can isolate the data from one customer to another customer and in some instances i would not like to name them but in some instances they have sold some customers data to another customers date customer many a times i have i know few people and it was also published in the media that many hrms firms were selling the data of the employees of hundreds of the customers to finance companies or to credit card companies or to maybe dish tv type of companies so this is some and they use it for whatsapp marketing telemarketing and what not so this is data integrity so you need to understand that this particular data integrity is very well taken care of and one important thing if you have adopted cloud right now and if you have found some cheaper deals putting your data overseas you need to understand that india will have its own data localization policy and it will mandate that indian companies data has to reside in india which will make cloud adoption expensive in the beginning because india does not have uh, adequate supply of cloud services which are located in india where data is localized so these are the concerns you must think about while you are thinking about adopting cloud or comparing cloud with on premise so this is something which uh, i thought that it would be useful uh, to answer this particular question Uh, before we move to the next part i would like to request prasanna to um, put up the poll please
so poll results are out 43% of the people consider exit barrier as a senior a serious concern of crowd adoption 57% consider recurring cost as a serious concern 86% of the people consider data leakage possibilities as a serious concern correct 64% uh, of the people are worried about what if uh, we depend on them then on them and then start charging us haphazardly uh, 57% of the people think that data integrity of the cloud service provider is a serious concern. Yes, so I hope uh, uh, this particular slide uh, helped you uh, in uh, having your own logic or algorithm to decide whether you want to go on cloud or whether you want to remain on premise. We'll move to the next question. The next question is what is IT standardization? So many of uh, the attendees have asked this question, what is IT standardization? And because they, they represent smaller organizations, uh, I thought that let me explain them all the entire, all the components of IT standardization in examples. So for example, uh, when we talk about IT standardization, it is divided in three different categories. First is IT policy enforcement. Just like we have HR policy in our organization, we should have IT policy also. Just like in HR policy, uh, we have uh, specific, specific uh, benefits for specific layer in the hierarchy of the organization. Like if the CEO is traveling, he is entitled for business class. If somebody else is traveling, he is entitled for um, you know second uh, uh, two-tire AC in train. Similarly, every user is entitled for IT privileges also, and accordingly there should be IT policy enforcement. So that is the first category. Second category uh, in the standardization of IT is data management. You know, it should define how you manage the data. And third is data protection. How are you going to protect the data? When you answer these three categories of the question, you are done with the IT standardization in your organization. So first of all, let us understand uh, what is IT policy enforcement. So let's say every organization should have an IT policy. Let's say I belong to accounts department. In that, I should be having access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Tally, or whatever accounting package I'm, uh, I'm using for my organization. Similarly, if I am in engineering department, then I am entitled for AutoCAD reader or editor. Uh, I'm entitled for SolidWorks, I'm entitled for Word, Excel, something like that. So that is, we call application controls. Second is admin users hierarchy. Whenever you are standardizing your IT, there would be one admin or few admins and most of the people would be users who do not have admin rights. That is very important in most of the organizations users are admins of their own systems, which is not desirable and it is not complying or aligning with IT standardization. And third is there has to be email, internet and USB policies, whether I'll be able to use pen drive or not, whether I will be able to use email uh, box, you know, in what size on uh, which URL or on which client that should be very well defined. Who will vigil my mails will be very well defined. And there would be internet privileges also very well defined. And that is called IT policy. So once we answer which user will use which applications, which user will have admin privileges, which users will have which privileges in email, internet, USB, then we are done with our IT policy. And then we should have right appropriate tools to enforce the IT policy. Another part of IT standardization is data management. So every organization, if they want to standardize their IT, their data should be compartmentalized. Means accounts users files cannot be seen by design users. Design users files cannot be seen by salespeople, something like that. Every organization should be worried about duplication of the data. And there has to be proper management and deduplication of the data. 
and there should be access permissions. So sometimes we want to give write, read rights only to the user. Sometimes we don't want to give um, certain rights to the user. So access permission is also very important. So under data management, if we clarify on data compartmentalization, data deduplication and access permissions, that is what we achieve through IT standardization. And we need to use right tools, appropriate tools to do so. And third is data protection. Data protection is very important to maintain the business continuity. So we have to make sure that there are well-defined and executed backup and recovery strategies. There should be proper policy for VPN and remote application access. Sometimes uh, we have seen a remote user is uh, accessing companies, uh, uh, you know, legacy applications by team viewer. No, if your IT is standardized, such jugad cannot work. You should have proper policy for VPN. You should have proper policy for remote application access. And you should have proper policies for work from home. And in case you are allowing your employees to, uh, to use their own personal computer, you should have policy that what they can do on personal computers, what they cannot do on personal computers, and how your data is protected on their personal computer. So this is what we call by IT standardization and there are right tools available to get this done and get the IT standardized. Yeah, Prasanna, can we uh, run a poll uh, on this, uh, please? Yeah, please answer this poll so uh, I can understand your uh, absorption to this particular topic. So we are seeing the results here with 22% uh, have limited points covered in their IT policy. 44% of the people have IT policy, but they find it difficult to enforce it. Um, and 33% of the people have exhaustive IT policy. Um, in terms of what is missing, 78% of the people understand that user-wise application controls are missing for 56% admin user hierarchy is missing for 33% email vigilance policy is missing for 22% USB and internet policy is missing for 22% deduplication policy is missing and 11% backup strategy and backup monitoring policy is missing. 22% role-based data access policy is missing and 22% remote application access policy is missing. Yeah, so I think uh, this has helped um, you a lot and uh, you, know, you can now explore various tools on how to deal with these uh, missing things and how to uh, have more standardizers on of IT in your organization. Now we'll move to our next question. That is how to increase IT managers productivity in SME. This is very interesting. And I have never touched upon this particular topic in any of my past webinars. But because now we have increasing number of IT professionals um, attending our webinars, uh, we have got this question and this is the burning question everywhere. See, your IT manager is a knowledgeable person. If 
we engage him in boring things his level of job satisfaction is not going to be up to the mark and a dissatisfied or under satisfied employees cannot be productive so i request all of you to introspect that in your team whether you may be an it professional then you have to introspect how much time of your day working day goes in what tasks if you are an enterprise owner i request you to introspect where is your it manager keeping busy most of the times we have observed that though the it people have very good talent they are very knowledgeable people they have a lot of potential to do more than what they are doing most of them are stuck in maintenance of multiple hardware there could be four five servers two servers three servers one nas box one firewall one router they are dealing with those multiple hardware software they are busy coordinating with multiple vendors there is a problem in internet they call firewall guy firewall guy says there is a problem with your internet they call internet guy internet guy will say no there is a problem with your firewall or something like that they are troubleshooting always and they have troubleshooting overheads due to mishandling by the user sometimes users take too much liberty with their computer or laptop and they do anything because of that the computer does not work properly or they have trouble they report to it people and it people are obligated to solve those problems which were avoidable if the user was not not so adventurous with his or her computer system but this is the fact that most of the it managers or it professionals have to spend a lot of time on certain things which are avoidable just by enforcing a level of discipline on the users many a times they are expected to configure each system with lot of policies and most of the times they do it manually on each system so that is where they are also stuck sometimes they are expected to take the backups manually and taking backup of all email email pst file data application data is cumbersome and they spend a lot of productivity on productive time on that they are also stuck with backup of individual computers you know they advise the users to save the data on the central location but users don't do it so they are obligated to take the backup of the users computers because they are it professional they cannot bluntly tell the user that if you come save anything on your computer i will not be responsible even if they say so when data is lost management will hold it people answerable and they would tell him that you should have done something they are also chasing their users to back up their laptops back laptop users are mostly senior type of users and they are always busy and they never give away their laptop for the backup to the it team and many a times when their laptop crashes their data is lost and it is a bad reputation for the it professional so when we faced this question with lot of research with lot of interaction we found that the it managers or it professionals though they are talented they can do more things they can do better things they are stuck in this unproductive task so every organization has to see to it that it professionals time is spent on productive tasks not the unproductive task and what could those productive tasks be it could be users training on operations management software see these people are good at software and most of the non technical users are not good at software so it manager can help user how you can use the shortcuts how can you can how you can get certain reports which are insightful from the erp system or how can you use uh, um better uh, way of crm you know so that is where the it talent time should be going enhancements of erp and customization ideas you know many a times uh, organizations are using certain software systems and 
we we uh, it managers have brilliant ideas how they can optimize those systems or how can they enhance those systems by customizing and their time should be utilized in interacting with the service providers to get that software more efficient to get that software more user friendly or to get that software giving more reports to the management they sh their time should be going to exploring new technologies you know uh, they should know what is happening in the world and they should know what is new and what is useful for the organization and they should have good reports about the status of their it infrastructure at their fingertips so that they can be proactive and they can really contribute positively to the organization's goals so when we talk about the productivity of the it manager we have to make sure that it managers time is not used on unproductive things and there are solutions to that we will discuss them also and when you free your it person or it professional from all these ordinary and mundane tasks he can very well start thinking about all productive tasks and it can do magic to your it adoption and return on investment in it yeah prasanna can we run a poll uh, we would like to So we have poll results on the screen. Eight percent of the um, attendees say that they don't have full-time IT manager. Thirty-one percent of them say that our IT resource is mostly stuck in day-to-day -day troubleshooting, and sixty-two percent of the attendees wish that our IT resource's time is less used by day-to-day -day troubleshooting. Yes. So uh, this is something uh, which we can actually see. evaluate and analyze and we can actually adopt certain systems which are adopt certain systems which can actually make it happen so now we will move to the next question how to make sme information security compliance ready see most of the smes are now suppliers to large enterprises or they are the exporters now when we talk about those smes and when they are suppliers to large enterprise or they are the exporters the expectations by their customers from these smes in terms of their it infrastructure are very very specific imagine um a volvo has a lot of vendors Volvo is one of the automobile companies which is inventors of which is inventor of so many technologies and they share a lot of technology with their vendors because they want their parts to be produced by those vendors and they will mandate and they will mandate they will mandate that their vendors have good information security provisions in their it and many a times they want certificate from their vendors that they are complying with information security sometimes people even want them to get audited also so compliance is something now which is creating a competitive edge for smes so if an sme is compliance ready 
it will be very very likely for such an sme to be able to provide service to a global giant of the world like there are many companies uh, who supply to lockheed martin corporation which is f16 and f25 kind of airplane producer in us a lot of defense products they want their uh, sme vendors or whoever bids uh, uh, for uh, any of the opportunities business opportunities with them have to submit certain certificates related to information security so smes have to be security compliance ready and in order to become security compliance ready they need to standardize their it they need to harden all laptops desktops mobile phones they need to plan recovery of accidentally and intentionally deleted data they need to have file operations audit trails they need to assure recovery after and somewhere attack to their customer they need to recovery they need to ensure recovery after the disaster they need to make sure that they have usb email vigilance and internet controls very well in place in order to do this they are required to buy so many multiple systems and when they are required to buy so many multiple systems for an sme it is very difficult to afford it as well as manage it so my answer to this question is smes can become security compliant information security compliance ready overnight so there are products in the market which we call it in a box solution so you put sir, that particular box and it tick marks all those uh, uh, expectations by their customers in terms of compliance to information security and that it in a box solution can make them security compliance ready so smes can become information security compliance ready not by adopting so many different systems integrating them and maintaining them it is done by the large enterprises smes cannot do that i know so many smes who bought server this year next year they bought firewall after that they have bought some storage after that they bought some dlp and by the time they uh, they were planning to buy fifth thing their server was already old and then they had to buy another server and they did not buy that next level of compliance so they never get complied overnight you know over a years they remain uncomplied and they uh, suffer also so they need it in a box solution which is affordable which is simple and that should be sufficient for them to become information security compliance ready so this is my answer to uh, this particular question can we uh, uh, run a poll for this uh, question prasanna i think we uh, we already have a poll for this so we have the poll results on the screen 21% of the people say they sign nds for data confidentiality 36% of the attendees say our customers require us to submit information security compliance certificate and 36% of the uh, um 71% of the people say we need information security as we generate sensitive business and technical data okay so this is third reason why sm is not because they need compliance ready for their customers they sometimes generate lot of I ipr and that ipr needs to be protected so that they are not competitively exploited now we will move to the next question 
how can we legitimately minimize hardware and software license cost in an SME? So when we talk about IT, standardized IT, a standardization of IT will require investment in IT hardware, which can serve as a domain controller hardware. So one needs a hardware server for domain controller. One needs some NAS storage or file server hardware uh, for sharing the files and compartmentalizing the data. One needs VPN firewall hardware to have remote access and to have some security against cyber attacks. One needs to have terminal server hardware for giving remote access to its legacy application to its work from home users and application server hardware. They need some server hardware to host their legacy application like tally or ERP or anything. On the software side, they are required to invest in Windows Server Domain Controller, which is installed on the Domain Controller hardware. They need to install or buy client access licenses, which are installed on users' computers. They need to uh, install Windows Server Terminal Server on Terminal Server hardware so that they can give remote access. They need to procure RDP client access license uh, so that users can access their applications remotely. They need Windows professional license on their computer system. They need MS Office as a productivity software. They need MS Outlook for email client, or they need G Suite or similar kind of services as software subscription. So this is something which is required. And uh, we are, uh, the question is about if it is required to invest in hardware and software so much, how can we minimize it? So again, for SME specific, question, my answer is you go for three things. One, go for an IT in a box solution. You know, you don't need for your scale of usage, your scale of users, you don't need multiple hardware, multiple software to cater to you. You can explore IT in a box solution where single hardware, single software solutions are available, which serves as domain service, file service, storage service, VPN service, remote access service like that. And it saves a lot of cost in terms of hardware of the servers. It saves a lot of cost on the software of the server operating system. It saves a lot of cost on the client access licenses. You can also evaluate WPS Office, which is very similar to MS Office and it is very cost effective. You can also evaluate Thunderbird, which is by Mozilla. It is a very good alternative to Microsoft Outlook, which is a paid product. And you can also evaluate DNS splitter technology. So now when you host your emails with G Suite or O365, they would charge you per user per year. Now in SME, most of the users, majority of the users, I would say 70 to 80% of the users check their emails while they are in office on their desktop. And mostly they check their emails on the mobile phone. So there you can use DNS splitter technology, which collects all the emails in one account. So you pay only for one account on recurring basis. Then it downloads all that emails from that single account, which contains emails for so many users. Then it splits and it again distributes those emails to different mailboxes user-wise and the users can access those mails separately and individually. So this is a DNS splitter technology, which one can adopt and save a lot of recurring cost. So this is my answer to this question. How can we legitimately minimize the hardware and software license cost in an SME? Go for IT in a box solution, go for WPS Office and Thunderbird and DNS split technology. Now let me explain what do we mean by IT in a box solution. So I'll go to the next slide. What is IT in a box solution? So IT in a box, any IT in a box solution, it could be two in one, three in one, four in one. In our old days, you know, uh, we had three in one, one cassette player, one radio, and uh, 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 maybe it, it had one CD player also. Two in one would be radio and cassette player. Uh, so IT in a box is something which has single hardware, which has single software, but it provides multifunctional services. So let's say if we require domain control service, we require domain control uh, service, we require a domain control hardware, we require storage hardware, we require storage software, we require VPN hardware. 
and software we require endpoint control software we require mail vigilance and distribution software we require backup and software and hardware and we can we require remote access server and software instead of going for multiple hardware multiple software for a smaller usage maybe from a 10 user to 300 users or 500 users you can very well depend on it in a box and that it in a box works on 80 20 rules you know let's say if something is something is available on multiple hardware and multiple software how can it run on single hardware and if it is possible to run it on single hardware why um, uh, the IT industry is recommending multiple uh, hardware and multiple software. There are two reasons. One reason is that in IT, IT industry has evolved as product companies for specific function. You know, so product company for firewall will have only firewall function, and there will be five ten leading companies. Product company for file services or storage will have that function only for that specific product. So the company which makes storage does not make firewall the company which makes firewall does not make storage you know and that's the reason we need multiple hardware and multiple software and another reason is because these are the specific dedicated function specific products they have large number of features and those large number of features are designed keeping in mind very large enterprise so let's say, for example, uh, we have one product which has 100 features, but out of those 100 features, if the SME, a moderate level of the user or a lower level of the usage, you know, usage scale, they are not going to use those 100 features and they're going to use only 20 features out of that. Rest of the 80 features are not going to be so useful for them because they are not operating at that particular scale. So this is where IT in a box fits, you know, how IT in a box caters all these services in single hardware because it does not have all the features of that function specific software individually when it is compared with. So IT in a box will have all the functions, but every function will have 20% of the features of a fully functional product. So it is 80-20 rule means 80% of the enterprises are 100% satisfied with 20% of the features. You take example of your mobile phone, it will have 100 features, but you are using only 20 features. And that is how by curtailing the features without compromising on required features and by curtailing the features which are not required by the SMEs, we are actually making IT in a box system. It is cost effective and it is simple. It is going to have lesser overhead on your IT manager's time and your IT manager is going to be able to uh, spend more time on productive tasks because now he has to manage only one system. He has to deal with one vendor only instead of managing multiple hardware, multiple software, multiple um, uh, vendors. So this is what we mean by IT in a box solution. What is IT in a box solution? So this is IT in a box solution. And as we know, black box is also an IT in a box solution. We are, this is not a demo session for black box, but yes, I'm going to show you the single uh, 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 dashboard of black box. Uh, there are so many such products you can evaluate and uh, you can make sure that uh, you have an IT in a box. Sushanto, can we log on to black box console, please? So we are just logging on to say IT in a box. So black box is a hardware, single hardware. Now just see the dashboard. It takes care of your mail requirement, internet requirement, desktop, laptop requirement, backup requirement, uh, firewall requirement, everything in single screen. So it's a single hardware, single functions. We are not going to get into a lot of details of it, but yes. And now this for firewall or this mail system or this internet system 
if it is compared with a full fledged functional system it might have 20% of the features but those 20% of the features are the most relevant features and that is how you save cost because it is single hardware single software system you save time because you are dealing with one vendor and three everything is integrated you don't have to do a lot of duplicate work so this is what we mean by single hardware single software system and there are many such so uh, yeah susanto can you please uh, bring back the screen to me so this is what we mean by it in a box solution and uh, now we will open the forum for question answers we already have four questions which i will answer um, uh, we are we are done with today's uh, number of uh, questions so i think mr jitin vaja is asking mdo is in ios or not yes mdo is there in ios uh, uh, this is not a relevant question uh, mr jitin you can ask some of our sales people you know it is about black box Uh, which is preferable on premise data or on cloud data remote work laptop desktop as i have shown you this in this slide uh, mr shrimali just a moment i will again show that slide to you yeah here you need to understand in which category of the organization you are uh, falling in how many locations you have and accordingly uh, you should have this in my opinion as i know uh, your organization in my opinion you should have a and b on cloud and rest on premise cloud data pros and cons with respect to data theft i have already explained that in my this slide so i would not not like to explain that again a uh, mobile application access to erp data theft any desk or we share platform data theft uh you can go for a uh, mobile device hardening solution which is called mdo in black box i think prasanna can you uh, ask chintan to uh, uh, ask uh, and show that to mr shrimali because this is very black box related question yes sir i'll do that uh, cloud data pros and cons with respect to data theft uh, see cloud data uh, data theft is a concern and uh, for public when you host it on the public cloud you know uh, your data is prone to theft you know there are very limited things you can really do uh, when you put it on the cloud so uh, you should evaluate private cloud for the same then mr uh, surya sagar how to make black box user friendly for it manager uh, we are working on it all the time so uh, you can check different versions of the black box as they are released in every version we are making it more user friendly but because it is an it in a box solution a lot of integration happens so uh, we have to trade off between uh, it in a box type of solution and uh, its features yeah i think we are done with all the questions uh, uh, prasanna we can conclude the session now thank you sir thank you for such a knowledgeable and insightful session thank you everyone for attending the session we appreciate you being here hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation if any one of you is interested in exclusive demo of black box it's happening on 17th march at 3 pm you can register and join the webinar uh, the link is you can find it on the event page of our website that is www.sinasoft.in um i request you all to kindly fill the survey form which you will get the which you will get at the end of this session to give us your valuable feedback thank you again thank you very much thank you and uh, in the next uh, uh, next to next week on 24th i am taking another webinar which is uh, some unknown facts about black box so it will be an interesting uh, webinar for those who want to know uh, certain unknown things about the black box thank you very much thank you prasanna thank you sushanto thank you